Hello, everyone. My guest today is Antoine Liboyer. He is the uh, founder and president of a C- uh, and CEO of a company called Swiss Software Editor GSX. He's seen information technology from all sides by working on vendor for vendors of all sizes. After 12 years in sales and marketing positions at IBM, he started the European Indirect Operations of Candle Corporation and has worked for startups in software distribution and mobile phone billing software. His most recent position is senior vice president at Barracoda, the leading pro- producer of Bluetooth industrial devices. All right, Antoine, are you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready to do that. And I just have to add one little thing. I was not the founder of GSX, but that's a small point. Okay, so when did you, what year was it launched and when did you join? I, it was launched 20 years ago and uh, I acquired it uh, 11 years ago in 2008. So I'm part of these entrepreneurs which uh, didn't start a company and some people are able to start a company. I knew that I was not the sort of this sort of entrepreneur. But I was looking for a company to acquire. I found GSX and I used some of my own um, money to uh, buy the company and bring in uh, a private equity investor who's been with me uh, ever since. Uh, And there are actually many people like me who are now looking at entrepreneurship, not by starting a company, but by saying, can I actually um, come in? buy a company and and add value when I can add value. Yeah. And that's what I have been doing. So sorry, it was founded in 2000 and you bought it in 2008? Absolutely. Okay, so in so what first off, where were you in life in 2008 where you said, "You know what? I have some money. I want to go buy a company." Um I uh, first I was in France. I'm calling you from Geneva right now, and I spent a year and a half um doing some consulting. Uh, co-writing a book because everyone wrote a book in my family. I understand you wrote a book as well, Nathan. Mm-hmm. Um, and I visited a number of uh, software companies because uh, given the experience that I've had, I knew a number of people and I wanted to uh, be able to run a company. And I started narrowing to a number of them. Then I went to visit the founder of GSX. I had work at Candle in, in uh, the sort of industry. I was impressed by the technology and I thought that I could be adding value and we agreed, and this is uh, how things uh, got started in February of 2008. Now, this was like 10 years ago. So what kind of scale was the company at that point? Were they bootstrapped? So um, so what we did is that, uh, so it's for first, we did the acquisition. Uh, we did this um, uh, doing uh, an LBO, but ever since 2008, we actually, we are totally bootstrapped. We've never raised any funding. Oh, no, no, hold on. Sorry, sorry. I want to get context before you started operating. So when you found the company, when you went in in 2008 and had your first conversation, what size was the company at that point? How much in revenue had it done? Um, The company was about uh, six, uh, six million and something in euros. So basically, um, seven in dollars. Okay, and that was in 2008. And that, and that was a SaaS platform back then, or on-prem, or what? No, no, it was a, it was a platform that was doing um, monitoring of um, IBM platforms. So uh, I was knowledgeable of the industry, and I thought that it was a very very creative technology which could have a lot of application. So I uh, could see that I could be improving a number of things in sales and marketing. And this is why I thought that it would be a good match in between the strengths of the companies and what I could be bringing. Okay, how did you guys all agree on an acquisition price? We uh, make a pro- we made a proposal. He was okay with this, and then I look for a private equity player, and we secure financing. Interesting. Okay, so what did you offer him? Seven million or some multiple of seven million? I wish I could tell you. Oh come on, that was like ten years ago. Uh, fair enough. So we gave him about um, uh, we gave him about one hundred and twenty percent of revenue. Okay, good. So, so somewhere caught between kind of seven and fifteen million bucks. You bought it for about ten, eleven million dollars, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. But you know, it's a long time ago. Now, what's very interesting is that uh, we had to spend time, you know, professionally with the company. We had to spend time also um, um, reimbursing the debt. But by the time this was done, the market in which we were, in a way, was gone. And uh, my investor and I, we decided that we had to uh, look at the company not as a sort of LBO candidate, but as a growth company. And we decided to take the technology and uh, port it not from the IBM world into the Microsoft world. It took us two or three years to do that. And then the cloud started appearing and all the customers started moving their um, collaboration tools to Office 365. So we had to do um, uh, two transitions and the strengths of the technology and the uniqueness 
is that we're able to do this transition. And, and this is something which is, you know, we've started moving by being, um, and would say, company with classic type of tools on um, probably what people would look at outdated applications. And what we've been doing in the last 11 years was actually transitioning it into a company which can have leading edge into what is the biggest market today for SaaS monitoring of uh, SaaS application, which is the monitoring of Office of Microsoft Office 365. Well, I don't understand what and that means. What do you mean monitoring Office 365? So, um, so you guys know Office 365. This is Microsoft collaboration platform. It's probably the 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 platform which, in terms of package SaaS, has got the the biggest amount of the growth. They are adding 30 million of users. You know, it's month. huge. I get it. I'm just trying to understand where you fit in. What do you mean by monitoring Office 365? We are probably, if you want to monitor the performance of a SaaS application, you need a new set of tools which give you information on how the service is being delivered and how the elements that are your own responsibility are affecting the performance. Okay. It's a totally new business. It's a totally new type of technology. And this is uh, where we have a lot of leading edge capabilities. And uh, we think that on this market, we got the best, uh, we have very, very competing, competitive product. Uh, and, and we have a lot of experience on on, on these things. So Antoine, help and me understand the, the average customer today that then is using your platform to monitor Office 365, what are they paying you per month or per year to do this? So what we do is that we have, you know, Microsoft has three packages, E1 in 3, E5. We got the same thing. We have three packages, which are $4 per year, $6 per year, $8 per year, according to the workload that they want to be monitoring. Uh, we focus on the large customers. So the average size customers that we have have got something like 16,000 users. We got about uh, 250 customers, which correspond to 3 million seats. And out of the 3 million seats, I would say that one half of them, which is the, the, is the one that we have on Office uh, 365. Okay, so so let me unpack that for a second. Instead of talking about on a per seat level, talk at a talk at an actual a, a, a business level. So when it with the average business that signs up with you, how many seats are they typically purchasing? Uh, let's put something like ten thousand seats, and the average price that I have is usually um, five and a half uh, per uh, year. So we are talking about uh, deals which could be uh, fifty thousand in average. The biggest customer, however, that we have is uh, customers with uh, 350,000 uh, seats, and we got some which are smaller. But the average one would be five per fifty thousand uh, dollars per year on a subscription basis. Yeah, so that'd be about four thousand two hundred fifty dollars per month, or something like that, somewhere around that. Do they are they always paying annual upfront, Antoine? Uh, yeah, that's, that's correct. And we have even some which uh, are uh, taking advantage of the fact that we have multi-year discounts so that they don't have to uh, to repeat these the year after. Yep. And and very interestingly, you know, this is characteristic. The, we still have a remnant of uh, some old business, which is going uh, smaller year after year, whereas my Office 365 business has doubled three times in a row. And my estimate is that this year we are going to be more than doubling. And you said and today time, you have 200, 250 customers? 3 million seeds, 250 customer. Um, half of them are totally on Office 365. The rest, they are on um, mixtures of on-premise and, uh, and um, you know, what people call a hybrid platform. Yep. Then so can I, can I use those have. numbers then to kind of back into to revenue? So 250 customers at a $50,000 ACV, you guys just passed 12 million bucks in ARR? No, not uh, quite, because some of the customers are actually customers that would transition from an old license and, and and maintenance model. Okay, so which one of those numbers is lower? The average ACV of fifty grand, or you have less than two hundred and fifty customers? We have 50, we have two hundred and fifty customers, but the uh, average revenue that we would get if you take the mix in between the new customers, which are on subscription model, as well as the customer which we would be have in. Uh, in uh, in, a, in a maintenance type of model because they are uh, yep. on the system, we probably would be more something like half of what you've been saying. Okay, got it. So something like maybe like two thousand five hundred dollars per month when you combine the two different streams, uh, two hundred fifty, you know, twenty five hundred bucks a month across two hundred fifty customers would put you at like six hundred grand a month right now in revenue. Is that more accurate? Um, something like that. Okay. Uh, Okay, very good. And then help me understand growth. So if you're around that today, where were you exactly 12 months ago? Do you remember? 
Um, if you look at the uh, Office 365 business specifically, um, we uh, were half of that. And what we have right now. So wait, hold on, and- Anton. Sorry, I need to make sure I understand that. If you're doing 600 grand ish today in revenue, and and you're saying you were half of that a year ago, so 300 thousand dollars a no. month. Um, no, no, you don't. Hold on. Um, so if you step back, I have an old business which is declining, and I have a new business which is growing very fast. I know. I'm asking so, for the blended average of both of them together. Not. I don't want to hear only the story of your good stuff, right? Because everyone has other stuff, and that's what we learned from. So your whole business all together a year ago, about how much was it doing per month? Look, it is very simple. We've been flat as a whole, with one going down and one going fast. I see. Good. Fair enough. By the way, I thank you for sharing that and being transparent about that. So you've been flat year over year. One's declining, and the other's growing. If we only look at the one that's growing, what's that growing at year over year? Like. 100%, 50%? 100% three years in a row. And what we are forecasting right now is that it's going to be probably even a little bigger. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. Now, after you raised the, you call it 11 million bucks in 2008 to buy out the company, did any of that stay in the company for operations or did it all go to the earlier team? Um, it stayed in the company. I mean, the, we, we, well, so hold on. We use the proceeding to pay uh, the founder who left, and uh, and then we uh, run the company as normal. Like this is this your question? Yeah. So did you? My question is: Did you raise additional capital after the first eleven million to buy the company? No, we 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 have not raised we have not raised any capital. So you're profitable we, today. We are break even, and what we are trying to do is the following: We are in a situation where the company has is is in a situation where we have. No technical debt, and this is something which is going to be probably happening middle of this year. We've made a lot of progress, but we wanted to reduce the dependency on old technology and make this, uh, uh, you know, uh, a totally uh, uh, scalable product. And and this is something which we've uh, which which we've done progressively. And in the same time, we knew that this was a very big market, so we tried to look and say, we want to make sure that we are growing the business. And we are rebuilding a set of customers so, so as not to lose opportunity. So I have this agreement with my investor, which is that we don't want necessarily to, to start, uh, um, you know, we don't want to be losing money, of course, but we want to make sure that um, we are growing the business and rebuilding the customer base with new Office 365 clients, as well as investing in the technology. And what's total team size today? There's 45 people. Okay. And when you look at some of the economics like churn, right? What's your total? And now obviously you have two very different profiles, but the company as a whole revenue churn annually is about what? If I look at, well, once again, I need to differentiate um, uh, both businesses. If I look at the Office 365 business, my churn last year was 96. I kept 96% of my revenue. Yeah. If I look at my old, um, you know, what I would call the legacy business, it's um, it's been decreasing by fifty percent. Okay. Now the fifty percent churn that happens on the legacy is that more? That's more than made up by the expansion on the other side of the business, or no? Um, right. I think that we will get. Ex- we will. It's right now balancing. My belief is that we will have uh, more than this in twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky to measure, but but I, I mean it makes sense. You're, it's very clear. One's declining. One's growing, and you're managing it that yeah. way. Let's. For this question, let's just talk about your new business. So the new business where people are coming on, signing up at four or $5,000 per month for the platform, how aggressive are you being in terms of acquisition cost? Um, it's tricky to say because the, the because of two reasons. The first one is that we are trying to develop multiple channels. we got people calling us directly. We are trying to develop... Um, uh, an OEM channel because we've got specific te- technology that interests a number of players. And uh, we are trying to go and develop also system integrator and MSP. On top of that, uh, the sales cycle that we have can be long. Uh, we've, however, been investing in, um, you know, in, we, we have a platform that is running on HubSpot. We're one of the very early customers of HubSpot. And we've been um, looking at investing this for, for a long time. So when I talk to my peers who are into the B2C business, they talk about customer acquisition that they can measure. But for me, um, if you take the customer that has uh, 350,000 seats, it took us 16 months to actually um, um, acquire them from start of discussion until the end. The smaller customers, we go a little faster. 
Um, well, yeah, but this is not a question. CAC is not a question about sales cycle speed. It's a question about ratio between kind of year one ACV and what it costs you to get the customer. So all I'm asking you is how aggressive are you willing to be to get a customer? Will you pay first year ACV to get the customer? What do you mean by ACV? Annual, you assume- annual contract value. I would need to think on that, but I think that most of our operational margin is coming from the renewal. Whereas if I look at my, if I were to balance the cost of acquisition from sales as well as technical sales, it should balance the, the cost of acquisition. So my, I would say that my my recurring business is definitely very profitable. My acquisition business is probably break even. Yeah, again, it's okay. It's not a question about profitability or not. It's just a question of how you're getting new customers and what it's costing you to do that, whatever the channel is. But we'll skip past that for now. Um, last question here before we wrap up with the famous five. Are you looking at raising capital for the company now or no? Um, we want to make sure that we're in a situation where we have Growth. The technical debt completely out, and we will be, and we have, we are recovering more customers than we are losing. So probably next year we'll think about something. Right now, I'm just focusing on the execution this year. Yeah, so maybe raising Q1 or something in 2020. Probably. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Like, do you do you have enough equity from when you did the deal with the private equity firm on, in 2008 to actually make this worth your while to be doing it 10, 20 years later? Um, I would say yes because we are still in business. I'm doing this because. That's, you know, I wanted to buy a company. I wanted to run a company. I like the technology. I love my team. I like the topics in which I am. And I'm tap dancing to the office every morning. That's a good thing, Mr. Warren Buffett. Let's start off here. Number one with your favorite business book. Um, Can I give you two business books? So uh, I read uh, 20 years ago, Crossing the Chasm. And I think that I read this every two years. Um, I'm aware that uh, Jeffrey Moore is adding new examples, uh, which makes it well twice. But every time that I read the book, it makes me step back and 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 I love I love what I'm reading. So this is great. There's another book which is something that I book that I've read many times. It's called Denial. I don't know if you've heard of this. It was written by Richard Tedlow, um, who is a Harvard a retired Harvard Business School professor who teaches taught business history, and he taught business history at the, at the business school. And he's been looking why a number of companies have been, uh, when things were happening, in denial situation and why some were able to actually react when things were happening. It's fascinating, and this is so close to everyone's business. It's a great business book that I really recommend. I've given it to, to many people. It's a fabulous book. Okay, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Quick answers here because we're out of time. Nasser Nadella, I'm very impressed by what he's doing. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have for building your company? Um, LinkedIn, and also something I like, which is Feedly, which uh, gives me a lot of uh, RSS feed in an aggregate manner. It's the successor of Google Reader, fabulous tool. Feedly is a good one. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, probably seven, but I'm a big fan of cat naps. So people know in my uh, company that at two o'clock, uh, when my door is closed from two to two ten, that's because I'm sleeping. Number four, how, uh, sorry, what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? Uh, married, two kids, fabulous, 20 and 23. If they're listening to me, hi. <laughs> and how old are you? Uh, I've been 25 for the last 27 years. I love that. There you go. So we'll call it 52 years old or something around there, right? Last question uh, here. 25 plus 27 is not 52, but I take it if you want. <laughs> 20, you said 25 plus 27? Yeah. Sorry, 25 plus 22. So 20, uh, 57. Oh, that's, that's- different. I was going to say 25 plus 22. That's a little different. Uh, that's four, yeah. that's four, wait, 25 plus 22 would be 47. So 32. Ah, yeah. Ah, this is cool. I get Okay. I thought so. So 57. Put them sleep. Yeah. There you go. 57. All right. Um, last question, uh, Antoine, what do you wish your 20 year old self knew? I wish that I had started working to small companies much earlier. They are much more fun than large ones. Guys, there you have it. Bought a company for 11 million bucks back in 2008 called GSX, monitoring IB platforms back, IBM platforms back then. Now today, the company is monitoring Office 365, big market to play in. They've got about two, uh, 250 customers paying $2,500 a month, so 620 grand ish in monthly recurring revenue. They've been flat year over year as they pivot to serving a different business model. So the churn product is more than uh, being made up for by the, the new revenue and the new product. Uh, uh, they are bootstrapped. Uh, they're break even right now. Team of 45 as they look to continue to scale. Antoine, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan.